Surprise, I'm live again. Um... Thought we would go live and discuss Kathleen's tweets today. So, hello. Um, I don't know if these uh, pictures. Um, so, everybody, well, there's 40 people on right now. Um, thought, I, I just got done with work for right now, and I thought I would pop on and go over... Um, KZ doing a Q&A on Twitter today. And no, Cherry, I did not see Scott's rant. I have not been on Facebook since for the last five, six hours. So, and I haven't gone through, I've got like over a hundred notifications and everything. So I have not seen. So I would be interested to see his rant. Hey, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn, for all your work today with uh, Twitter. Um... So we have, if you go to, oh, you submitted it to Gossip Group. All right, I'll try and bring that up. Um, we, if you go, when you're on the Stephen Avery project and you go on the left side and go to photos and then go to albums, you'll see an album that says Ask Zellner. And then there's uh, two parts. Oh, crap, hold on, that's a work email. Okay. Sorry. Um, all right. Let me scroll down to what you're saying. And I don't know how long I'm going to be on here right now and what we'll all get to. Um, but I figured if anybody wants to discuss her tweets today. <laughs> um, or what I could do is go through this nice album that uh, Lynn put together for y'all and on Stephen Avery Project and we can read them. But hold on, let me pull up a new tab and I'll go into our MAM gossip and see if Cherry's post is in there that needs to be, yeah, there are seven posts waiting on approval in there. Why did you bring that up? X that off. Sorry. Seven posts need approval. Why does it? It keeps bringing up like I'm going to post and I'm trying to bring up the posts that need approval so I can see them. Uh, sorry that you guys are. <laughs> Is there an Avery family Facebook page that's legit? Okay. Um. Oh, I, okay, so I'm about to approve it, but I'll read it to you all, what Scott Toddick posted today. Um, I would like to take a minute of my time from reading all these nasty emails and messages to thank Kathleen Zellner for all false accusations against me and my stepson, Bobby, and for ruining our lives. I think you're a fucking cunt. Thank you, and have a good day. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, Jerry, you can uh, post that screenshot in this thread, too, as well for people to see. All right. I just approved everybody's posts over there in gossip. Yikes. Um, Danielle asking, how Stephen feeling? I have not spoken to him, but Kathleen said in her uh, Twitter thing today that he was doing fine. Uh, yeah, see, and I, I have Twitter and I don't like Twitter. Um, lots of people saying hello. Um, there's my boyfriend home from work. All right. So people are saying what happened on Twitter. So what Kathleen did today, it was at 11 a.m. my time. 
she was on Twitter and people could submit her questions by doing a hashtag ask Zellner and I had to leave for work um, so I don't know what I missed but here I'll just click on our photo album and sorry for my dogs barking since my boyfriend just got home from work um, so I'll, I'll just start reading through these and so somebody said does it appear that the only likely solution to freeing exonerating Avery is political where judges and other government officials directly involved such as the AG and governor are unseated in order to obtain a proper and objective review of any and all new evidence in the case and Zellner said we still believe that we will prevail with the scientific evidence and Brady violations that we have unmasked we have not given up on the Wisconsin court system to reverse and send Avery's case for an evidentiary hearing this question is with the new forensic evidence you have Kathleen can't the police reopen the investigation into her murder and re-interview Bobby Scott and her boyfriend did they take DNA swaps from them at the time and Kathleen said the police reopened an investigation into the Hallback murder in November 2017 based upon the evidence that we have developed the police have a DNA swab from Bobby but not Scott or Ryan Hilgas the only unidentified DNA is crime lab items. Um, and then uh, Kathleen added to it, CX and A23, both of which exclude Stephen Avery, but otherwise, unless we discover new DNA of Ms. Hallback and or another killer, the DNA that has been developed is of limited use. It does not, however, implicate Stephen. Um, question is it correct to assume the blood if taken from the sink was coagulated if so and it was planted that way is there a test to determine coagulated blood versus blood from a fresh wound and Kathleen said no the blood in the sink was not necessarily coagulated it takes 15 minutes if it were removed with a wet rag it could be easily dripped into the rav within 15 to 20 minutes It, and then she continues on saying it is not important whether the blood is coagulated or fresh if the source of the blood not coming from the blood vial that is critical to determining who planted the blood our theory is that the blood was planted by the killer not the police question have you thought about petitioning Trump he's certainly open to using his pardon power for clear injustices or even excessive sentencing surely Brendan Dassey's sentence would be one he'd look at closely Kathleen said no not possible for Stephen or Brendan because they are state cases question can luminol be used years later and still detect blood evidence and if yes do you plan on using it in the trailer or garage to show that the prosecution's theory didn't happen Kathleen yes luminol can be used years later to detect blood evidence we have done luminol testing in the Dassey garage and we are waiting for the results of the DNA swabs that we collected question was there any order to how the Avery lot was sorted does it make sense where the RAV4 was parked Avery's made it sound like they had a method of sorting the cars around would be interesting if RAV4 was not where it should have logically been Kathleen the only thing that makes sense about where the RAV is parked is that it was towed into the Avery lot and left pointed in the opposite direction of the other cars and too close to the car next to it for the driver to exit question was what was the ex-boyfriend's alibi for when she disappeared was there one even given Kathleen no he was never asked for an alibi just another example of how sloppy the initial investigation was question was there any order to how the Avery lot would oh ah, okay so this is her adding to that sorry again um, the location and position of the RAV indicate that it was planted. Our theory is that it was done by the police and not the killer. 
Uh, question, why wasn't Ryan Hilgas, Teresa Hallback's ex-boyfriend, a bigger suspect in the second season of Making a Murderer 2? It looked like he did a lot of shady things with the police. Do you really believe Bobby Dassey is a bigger suspect than Ryan Hilgas? Kathleen, our theory is that Ryan Hilgas was involved in planting the car on the Avery property, but it is someone much closer to Stephen that had access to his trailer to plant the blood. Question. Was the RAV4 ever checked for fingerprints? Answer, yes, there were eight sets of prints, eight sets of latent prints that were unidentified. However, the prints ruled out Stephen and Brendan. Question, why has there not been more made of the fact there wasn't a shred of evidence in the bedroom despite Brendan's confession that she was handcuffed and stabbed in there? Kathleen, that issue was repeatedly raised by Northwestern during their oral arguments and in their briefs of Brendan's case. Question, do you want to slap Ken Kratz as much as we do? Kathleen, we want to slap him in the legal sense, not in a physical sense. Question, can you test the blood for drugs? Maybe they got it by drugging him. Kathleen, not relevant. Question, when Steve Avery's trailer was broken into, any thoughts on how they knew to look for his blood in the sink? Kathleen, the person who removed the blood was aware that Stephen's wound had reopened. Question, if Judge A.S. had bothered to address all the issues of the evidentiary hearing, would it be easier to get the appellate court to really apply more attention to the appeal? Kathleen, just the opposite. It is to our benefit that she did not address 70% of the issues. It's more likely to be reversed. Question, where is the RAV4 now? Has it been destroyed? Kathleen, it's being stored by the Calumet County Police Department. Question, is there a bigger buffoon than Ken Kratz? Kathleen, we're still searching. <laughs> that one has nothing on it. Question. Have you checked out the smelter or talked to any people that worked there at the time? Kathleen, yes. Question, why was the coroner not permitted involvement in the case despite numerous other Manitowoc County Sheriff Department's employees having involvement? Kathleen, not sure. That is a felony in most states. Uh, go, switch. Question. Is there any way to corroborate or otherwise that Bobby went hunting at 3 p.m. on the day in question? Sightings, cell pings, etc.? Kathleen, we have been able to determine his location through cell phone pings and he was not at the location he claimed to be. Question, will you continue to fight on behalf of Stephen Avery for as long as it takes? I think you came across really well on MAM2. Kathleen, absolutely. We never give up on our clients who are innocent. Question, was the hood that covered the RAV4 ever dusted for prints? Kathleen, yes, no prints were detected. Question, I'm just curious if the blood was taken on the 3rd, but the truck driver didn't alert Colburn about the RAV until the 4th. Was their main intention really to go there for blood? or why were they at his place? Kathleen, yes, the blood was taken on November 3rd and planted on November 3rd. So it was present when the RAV was discovered on November 5. Question, how can so many people be involved in the cover-up and stay silent for this long? Do you think once you hit a breakthrough, the major players will dot, dot, dot? Kathleen, we're hoping that people will start talking because of the massive global publicity on the case. Question, are you filing something in November on behalf of Steven or is there something else going on in that month? I read somewhere I think that you're going to court about something but I can't recall. Kathleen, we file our brief with the Wisconsin Appellate Court on December 20th. Um, so I think this is a part two where she's saying, our experts are telling us the spare key is not an everyday key. It most likely came from her house and was picked up by the police. Question, have you handled the, the Stephen using the same science as all your other cases? 
or have you approached this one differently? Kathleen, no, I have approached this case exactly the same as all the other cases I have prevailed on with blood spatter, ballistics, and DNA. Question, so if Bobby and Scott murdered Halbach, but how, but how do you think the day planner get back to her house? Do you think the ex-boyfriend was still involved? Kathleen, the day planner is an independent issue from the murder of Ms. Halbach. It would most likely be connected to moving the RAV4 and accessing its contents. All of Ms. Halbach's paperwork was removed from the RAV4 before it was found. Question, which role plays Barb in this whole scenario? I think she knows more about Scott and Bobby. Kathleen, impossible to say at this point. Question, is there a possibility that the same agreement that made the West Memphis Three get released can be used to get Stephen free? Kathleen, we would never agree to an Alford plea. I have never agreed to an Alford plea for any of my exonerated clients. Question, has anyone from the state commented on the fact that Hallback's ex, ex-boyfriend had the updated day planner that could have come from her RAV4? That seems like a really big deal. Kathleen, no. Question, my question is whatever happened to her camera? Kathleen, it was burned. Question, are you still confident in Bobby Dassey being the main suspect or has things changed since filming season two? Kathleen, nothing has changed. Question, are there any other suspects if Steven didn't do it? Kathleen, watch the series. Question, in your opinion, what is the biggest piece of evidence against Mr. Avery that you have to overcome to have his conviction overturned? No blood evidence, lack of physical evidence for the murder and burning of the body, which is it that is holding them back? Kathleen, we have discredited all scientific evidence against Stephen. Furthermore, we know that Hallback's car was located off the property, further discrediting the prosecution's theory. Question, I thought the police in America have trackers on their cars. Would it not be possible to find out exactly where Andy Colburn was when he called dispatch regarding number plate? Kathleen, Manitowoc County did not have that technology in 2006. Question, I was hopeful that the CASO reopening the case would help, but I haven't heard much mention of it. Other than the interview with Bobby, did anything come out of that? Kathleen, yes, an abundance of new information, which will be included in our appellate brief filed on 1220. Question, is Stephen coming close to exhausting all of his appeals? Kathleen, absolutely not. Stephen is at the beginning of the appeal process on our post-conviction and he is years behind Brendan's case because Stephen did not have a lawyer until I took the case in 2016. Question, why is Bobby not locked up for having hundreds of sick images on his computer? Kathleen, good question. Remember, he was the state's star witness. Perhaps he was pressured into that with threats of prosecution. Um, this was somebody's tweet that I'm blocked from. So somebody who is blocked Stephen Avery Project on Twitter. So I don't know what they said. But uh, Kathleen's response is the bullet that was allegedly the cause of death that never went through a human body and only the Avery garage wall. Um, question. Hi, Kathleen. Is it a Brady violation that Colburn reported and discovered Hallback's car the day before it was officially discovered? Kathleen, yes, because he did not prepare a report on his conversation with Kevin Romlo. Question, hi from Scotland. It seems to me you are wasting your time despite the obvious innocence and the clear framing of Stephen and Brendan. There is no way the authorities are going to back down. They are totally corrupt to the core. Kathleen, all caps, wrong, wrong, wrong. I have done this 20 times before when no one thought it was possible with more difficult cases. Question, and th that person's name is Foo Fighter, so excellent name. Um, why didn't Stevens' trial attorneys believe the blood could have been taken from the sink? They seem to only latch on to the blood vial theory. Kathleen, 
blood vial was standard and that the stopper condition was standard. It's unfortunate that they did not have a blood expert and we have because the state's entire theory was discredited. Question, how does Stephen feel about the possibility of his nephew and brother-in-law being real suspects? Kathleen, Stephen wants the real killers to be caught regardless of the family connection. He looks forward to regaining the freedom stolen from him. Question, how many people were in on the murder and the planting of evidence? Kathleen, at most, one or two people were in on the murder and one or two people were involved in planting evidence. Question, where is the case up to now? What is the next step? Kathleen, our appellate brief is due on 12 2018. Question, is it your belief that Teresa's belongings found in the burn barrel are secondary planted items, that her actual items from the day, keys, camera, bag, etc., are missing? Do you believe they might have been kept by the killer? Kathleen, obviously there are items of Teresa Hallback that are missing. It's impossible to know what the killer kept. Question, how is Kratz not turning over or mislabeling the DVD CD evidence not a clear Brady violation? At the very least, sorry, at the very least, I would think it would have been material impeachment evidence, though I guess it depends on whether it would have been admissible in Wisconsin. Kathleen, we agree totally. Let's hope that the Wisconsin Appellate Court does also. Question, do you think Bobby knew the police would be planting the rab on the Avery plot, waited for them and told them about the blood in Steve's house? Kathleen, no way to know. Question, what is the average time frame in your 20 wins that a person gets out after you've started working their case? Kathleen, the longest case for me has been four years. The average length of time nationally is 14 to 15 years post conviction. Question, you mentioned in the series that swabs weren't conducted on the hood release latch or hood support. Have you had the opportunity to swab those areas yourself? Kathleen, it is not necessary for us to swab the areas because we know that the swabs submitted were Stephen's groin swabs. Question, would you have put Stephen on the stand if you were his lawyer in the original case? Kathleen, yes. Question, why Stephen? If some unknown person killed Teresa, what is the reasoning behind framing Stephen? It is, is it simply because he was last on the daily planner? Kathleen, the killer was highly motivated to frame Stephen because the killer would have been on the short list of suspects. Question, do you think police knew who killed Teresa or just came across a crime that allowed them to rid themselves of Stephen and lawsuit? Kathleen, no. I think the police were duped by the killer and they planted evidence after they discovered Stephen Avery's blood in the RAV4. Hmm. Question, could you take an action against Kratz for his clear attempts to bias the case? Kathleen, it is an issue in our appeal that he has crossed the line ethically, but more importantly, in terms of concealing evidence. Question, do you think police knew who killed Teresa or just came across, oh, wait, that's the same one, sorry. Uh, question, when the case against Steve falls apart and you are successful at freeing him, will that set Brendan free too? Kathleen. Yes, it is possible that the forensic evidence used to free Stephen would also be used to free Brendan. Question, how long have you actually been on this case? Kathleen, it will be three years on January 16, 2019. Question, isn't it odd that bullet item FL is on top of the concrete dust and seems to have repelled all dust from jackhammering the crack in the floor? Kathleen, absolutely, you're very observant. Question, how many more innocent people would you like to help free before you retire? Kathleen, it could be endless, not planning to ever retire. Question, why are you and your team so amazing? Kathleen, we just work hard. 
Question. How will you break through the Wisconsin justice system when it is evidently riddled in corruption and cover-ups? Kathleen. I am still hopeful that I will find at the appellate level judges that are truly interested in getting to the truth of what happened to Teresa Halbach. Question. This is something that has haunted me and would love to hear Kathleen on this. I tried asking too, but can't find my tweet. Oh, so that was a reply or something. And so Kathleen said, it has been repeatedly addressed by Northwestern and ignored by the courts. Question, the odds of both Stephen and Brendan getting released with the, within the next year or so? Kathleen, I never predict outcomes. I just know that they will prevail if we keep working on their behalf. Question, is there any truth to Nancy Grace's claim that Stephen called Teresa's phone after her interview asking why she didn't show up? Seems like some pretty damning evidence if he did. Kathleen, none, all capitals. Nancy's Grace misstatement of facts. She's made many of them about my innocent clients over the years. Question, have you had any communication with Teresa Halbach's family? Answer, none. It is understandable that it is too, too painful for them to consider that the wrong people may be in prison for Teresa's murder. Question, is it possible the actual murderer was someone in law enforcement who is working the investigation, thus all of the planted evidence and cover-ups? Kathleen, no, the killer was not law enforcement. Question, have you ever had to drop a client for lying to you about their innocence? Kathleen, yes. Question, have you spoken directly with Barb regarding Scott and Bobby's suspicious activity on the day of the murder? Kathleen, no. Question, with respect, you've said you think blood was collected by killer, but you think car was moved by police. Does that mean blood was planted by killer before cops moved car? If so, why move it? Kathleen, yes, because the car was not on Avery property and the cops wanted to implicate Stephen, and they did not have the blood results from inside the car at the time it was moved. Question, will you be holding more Q&As? This is great. Kathleen, yes, if the demand is there. Question, has any witness, jury, cop, et cetera, have come clean to you about Stephen Avery's innocence, even off the record? Kathleen, yes. Question, I used to work in a DNA lab where we attempted to extract a profile on human bones. Some were burned. It's hard to believe that only bone fragments were found. If these were really Teresa's bones, then she must have been dismembered. No evidence of this on Avery property? Kathleen, she was dismembered. We discovered there were an additional two human bone piles with cut marks in the Manitowoc County property south of Radden's gravel pit. Question, what can we, the average person, do to help? Kathleen, Write to your representatives, really scrutinize the judges that you vote for, and send a letter to Stephen for support. Question. Seems like you have a clear idea who killed her. Would it make more sense in proving who did do it instead of trying to prove Stephen didn't do it? Kathleen. I will have to do both things in order to prevail. Question. Are you still being filmed in your investigations, etc.? Kathleen, no. Question, have you ever had law enforcement tell you thank you after helping them solve the original case? Kathleen, yes. When I produced the 21 confessions on the Larry Eiler case, law enforcement thanked me. I was also thanked on the Rossetti 4 case by the prosecutor and law enforcement in, in addition to the Fox case. Question, do you know who the killer of Teresa is for sure? but cannot disclose until you get heard in court? Kathleen, it's more important to show that Stephen did not get a fair trial than try to solve the crime. Question, you are amazing. Do you think there will be any DNA tests which will incriminate the real murder? Kathleen, it's still possible. Question, do you think Buting and Strang knew about the Bobby Scott connection? but were unable to bring it up at trial? Kathleen, 
I, be, I believe they overlooked evidence in their possession that would have discredited Bobby as a state star witness. Question. Did you ever investigate who seemed to be stalking Teresa in the first Making a Murderer? They mentioned about new... Mm, that's a typo there. Something phone calls that mentioned was making her uneasy. Can't recall who she told. Kathleen, we spent a huge amount of time investigating those harassing phone calls. Question, do you believe that the reason the key had no other fingerprints besides Avery's is because the person planning evidence forgot to wear gloves when moving the vehicle? Kathleen, the DNA of Ms. Hallback was obviously removed from her key by the person who planted it in Stephen's bedroom. There is no credible explanation why there is no DNA mixture on the key. Question. Do we know that only Bobby Dassey had use of his computer? Kathleen. We know on the dates that we isolated in our filings that only Bobby Dassey was home. Question. Do we know what Sika key means yet? Kathleen. We believe Sika key is a stand-in for skinny which she didn't go further on that, but I'll tell you, Skinny is Scott Toddock's nickname. Question, how many cases are you working on at the same time that you're working on Stevens? Oh, that was my question. And Kathleen said that's confidential. Um, question, Whoa. was other DNA found in the car or was there evidence that it was cleaned inside? Plus, where are the sticks the car was hidden with? Would there be a DNA test possible? Oh my God, just go ahead. We just found that on the ground. Kathleen, the car was definitely wiped clean by the killer because there were no fingerprints of Teresa or anyone else in the RAV4. Oh, and so this is a second part of Kathleen answering my question on how many cases. And um, Kathleen said, I have achieved two additional exonerations during the time I've worked on Stephen's case. Question, but why would Hilgas move the car to the Avery property? Due to police pressure? Kathleen, we are not saying that Hilgas moved the car. We are saying that Hilgas may have assisted the police in locating the car because it is clear the police knew where the car was and told Pam Sturm where to find it on 11-5. Question, how is Stephen doing? I hope he is still envisioning that home he will build for his mom and dad when you set him free. Kathleen, Stephen is a remarkably strong and resilient person. Because he is innocent, he will never give up. He is very happy with the work my team has done. Question, what was the ex's excuse for having the planner or was he not interviewed yet? Can you force an interview? Kathleen, we would love to know so that we can clear him, but he has never agreed to be interviewed by us. Question, I want to be Zellner when I grow up. Kathleen, well, I hope you're adept at working hard and are intrigued by extremely difficult problem solving. Wishing you the best. Question, when did you first realize Stephen was innocent? Kathleen, when I first interviewed him, I then subsequently confirmed what I believed through the brain fingerprinting. Question, did you happen to notice that the police were interrogating Stephen gave away that they had his DNA before the actual report was written? Kathleen, yes, they had his DNA from the 1985 rape case. Question, what piece of evidence do you feel proves irrefutably that Stephen is innocent? Kathleen, it is not one piece of evidence. It's all of the scientific evidence that we have uncovered, including the scientific evidence and Brady violations. Oh, and um, this is Zellner was uh, responding to Kim Kardashian's post or tweet or whatever, saying that she was watching Making a Murderer, where Kathleen said, if you are looking for pure entertainment, MAM2 might not be for you. It chronicles a broken justice system too infirm to correct the travesty of two wrongful convictions. 
Okay. Question. Anyone watching Making a Murderer 2? Why has it Zellner tested the paint on the headlight with the car blocking the way to see if it's a match? Am I missing something? Z Kathleen. Re we requested the headlight for testing from the state. They agreed it was relevant. That is an issue. They disagreed that it was relevant. Sorry. That is an issue that is pending before the Wisconsin Appellate Court. We would test the headlight for any substance of interest. You're not missing a thing. And Kathleen says, on the blood in the sink, Stephen has given us an affidavit averring Bobby was with him when he, his finger was bleeding and that taillight Stephen saw matched Bobby's blazer. All right, so now I've read through all the ones that are in the first album and I have to go into the other one. So hold on while I switch to that one. Ask Zellner part two. Question, can you be our new prime minister? Answer, I love Canada. I've lived there, but wouldn't want to be the next prime minister. Question, was Mike with him? Kathleen, no way to know. We can hear one voice in the back of the Colborne phone call saying it's hers. And see, that makes more sense because I always thought it said it's here, cars here, but it's hers makes way more sense. Um, okay, sorry. Question. When a judge obviously isn't interested in doing her job, can't anything be done? Kathleen, yes, and we have filed a motion to substitute another judge, and that will be decided if we prevail on the appeal. Question. They just threw up this warning on your account, and I had that too when I was on there today, saying this account is um, temporarily restricted. And Kathleen's answer is, can't imagine why. I don't think I have any enemies. <laughs> Question. When, where you, where, were you able to access the marker light from Teresa's RAV4? Did Bobby sell the blazer or does he still own it? Kathleen, we requested the parking light. The state objected. That's an issue on appeal. Bobby's vehicle has been crushed. Question, how long would it take to burn a human body in a bin? Kathleen, our expert, Dr. Dehan, says it takes three to four hours to burn a human body in a burn barrel. Question, have you removed the ex-boyfriend as a suspect of the murder? Kathleen, we have not removed the ex-boyfriend as a Denny candidate. We wish he would remove himself by cooperating with us. Question, do you have cell tower info confirming that Teresa did not have time to go home and drop off her day planner? The documentary says she was in Sheboygan area, but that is a bit vague. Kathleen, we do not have cell phone tower da data. We just have mileage to Schmitz's and the time of the Speckman call and cannot from that evidence conclude that she had time to go home. Question. How much money would you pay to watch Colburn's face while he watches Making a Murderer 2? Kathleen, not really interested in his facial expressions, much more interested in holding him accountable. <laughs> uh, question, is it legal for the DA to try both suspects separately and have two different stories of how the murder was committed? And I, I submitted something like that too because it's something that I'm always flabbergasted about. Uh, Kathleen, in my 30 plus year career, I have never seen two suspects tried with completely divergent stories, i.e. cause of death is a gunshot to the head versus cause of death is a cut throat. Question, were you able to replicate any of the scientific evidence the prosecution used? Kathleen, absolutely none. We would challenge anyone in the world to replicate the evidence used by the prosecution. Question, do you think the Netflix series has helped or made it more difficult to get Stephen released? Kathleen, I believe wrongful conviction cases are always assisted by intense scrutiny of the media. Question, 
I just noticed last night after re-watching episodes one, two, that the Hallbacks tried to dismiss their wrongful death claim against Stephen. Do you know what the reason behind this was? Kathleen, you are correct. They did voluntarily dismiss the case, which is puzzling. Question, what is your opinion stance on the Alford plea? Kathleen, I'm opposed to the Alford plea in cases such as this when there is no pressure from a death penalty conviction. Question, was any of the images or videos found on the DASI computer a federal crime, i.e. child pornography? If so, I believe it needs to be reported to the FBI. Kathleen, interesting point. I do not have any evidence that it has been reported by law enforcement or the prosecution. Question, has anyone addressed the day planner page with the handwritten notes at all? Kathleen, no, but it is an, an issue on appeal. Question, do you think we'll be talking about this case in 10 plus years? Kathleen, hopefully you will be discussing how Stephen and Brendan were finally freed and how they are living happy and healthy lives outside the state of Wisconsin. Uh, uh, question, so if the appeal to the appellate court fails, what happens next? Kathleen, we'd appeal that decision to the Wisconsin Supreme Court. If we've developed new evidence, we'd refile at the trial court level in Wisconsin. EDPA is a big deterrent to filing in federal court, as you can see given the outcome of the Dassey case. Question, did Stephen say why he purchased leg irons and handcuffs three weeks before he allegedly killed Teresa Hallback? Kathleen, yes, Stephen purchased these novelty items for his own personal use with his girlfriend. There's nothing illegal about the purchase. None of Teresa's DNA was found on either, and neither item could have restrained an adult woman who feel, feared for her life. Ooh, that's an interesting point. Question. Looking at the search questions from the computer, is it fair to assume Bobby had or viewed underage porn? Has legal action been taken? Kathleen, no legal action has been taken. And then Kathleen said, time for final two questions. Question, what's your opinion about the way Chris, sweaty sweat sweat, thinks he's still the star of the show? I mean, honestly, if I did that poorly of a job, I wouldn't be having my face shown everywhere. That's, that's funny. Kathleen, actually, we enjoy Mr. Kratz's appearances in Making a Murderer 2 with his sweat-soaked shirt. He gives new meaning to the term, watch that body language. Woohoo! Um, question, did you read Ken Kratz's book? Kathleen, I did. I'm looking forward to a nonfiction version being put out. Uh, and then Kathleen said, thanks everyone for participating. If you want to continue the dialogue, please let So I'm everything on there. Oh, maybe the bottom of this and see if you guys have any questions for me. I'm only going to get down another 15 minutes until the top of the hour here. It's 6.45 here. Um, and also I see I'm getting a wonky symbol here. Uh, signal symbol. Um, all right, so Adam, I'm a big Avery Dassey supporter. I just don't see the point in this. That's all I'm saying. All right, I don't know what he's referring to. Um, Danielle says, just where are Kratz's balls, by the way? They sound like they are tucked up in his throat. <sighs> Jamie says, I'm baffled as to why the Hallbacks dismissed the wrongful death case against Avery. I will never set foot into Wisconsin again, corrupt on all sides. The prosecutors, cops, and judges who are complicit should all be in jail. Um, from what I recall, they were trying to block Stephen from being able to get a uh, uh, get legal representation. So they were filing suit because they wanted to be able to take any money he had so he couldn't afford to defend himself um, and that he would just have to rely on the state. And um, once he settled and got that 400 or whatever it was, 400, right? Um, and that he paid string and beauty, 
there was nothing for them to get, so they dropped it. Um, Chrissy, um, I don't get Twitter, so I, for one, want to hear this. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, people replying to each other. Joanne says, do we know who Teresa's stalker was? Well, her Ooh. boss at the photography studio, Thomas Pierce, had said it was Ryan Hilgas. So, um, you know, if there was another, I don't know, but it was Ryan Hilgas. Yeah, Janet, lost you for a minute. Yeah, because I got a circling saying trying to reconnect um, that my Wi-Fi uh, signal was low. Jamie says, I'm still so confused as to why our president cannot make a pardon when I feel like other presidents have been able to do so on a state level. Am I wrong? Their case would have had to have gone to the federal level. Um, Anne Marie thanks me for reading it. Sure. Yeah. Well, and I didn't get to read it all before I went to work. So now I got to see it all too. Um, uh, Carrie, if you're asking me, do I think Stephen is innocent? Absolutely. Hancock says, Kathleen has come up with so much evidence and tests to prove so much was wrong. I hate that it takes so long. Yeah. Um, Victoria says, you can tell Kratz and them are behind it by body language. Yeah. Donna says, I do wish the Hallbacks would make some type of comment. I cannot believe that they are convinced of Stephen. Sam says, if you want proof how corrupt the judicial system is, just follow this story. I can only imagine how many innocent people are in prison for crimes they never committed. And something to always remember, too, of how many people confess that didn't do it. And they're not all um, have some kind of um, IQ deficit. You know, these people are trained. They get you in that room. They question you for hours and hours. You just don't know. And it's easy to say you never would, but you don't know until you're in that situation. Uh, Sarah, trying to decide who should be awarded the biggest douche in the universe award, but there are so many candidates. Kratz is a top contender, though. I concur. Sand. Um, Alan, then this post is not for you. There are those that are not as knowledgeable as you are on the case and have requested this information, just scroll on by. Correct, I know for people who have been around forever or have um, really been looking into this case, a lot of this stuff is just um, tedious for you, but there are new people every day that watch Making a Murderer. You know, we get that in messages we get to Stephen Avery Project of people who had never watched it until just now. So everything is new to them. So don't hold it against people that are new to it. Um, you know, help them. Direct them where to go. Um, Jennifer, do Wisconsin even have $36 million to give Stephen from his case before? The Manitowoc Sheriff's Department Insurance Company said that they would not be liable for it and it would be the person, people individually that Stephen was suing. So it wouldn't be Wisconsin that was on the hook. It would have been Link and Colborne and Peterson, the like. Um, Chris, does he get or did he get the money from previous case? He only got the 400 and something thousand that then went to Strang and Butting. Erica, is Barbara still currently with Scott? Yes, they are married. Kelly, what about the DNA on the license plate? Yeah, and that license plate was folded and thrown in a car that was closer. It was like by where Earl's house is or was, so closer to um, the office down there. The, uh, the plate was in a vehicle over there. Caroline says, I'm sorry for my ignorance, but is there a link to making a murderer to making a murderer to justice for Kathy? Please enlighten me. I don't know what you're referring to, Caroline. I'm sorry. Uh, Mindy, if when they get out, are they going to leave the area? Obviously, the law doesn't like them. Well, Stephen won't leave his parents. So unless his parents leave, Stephen wouldn't. 
And then Brendan would be the same way. He would want to be where his mom is unless he gets angry when he finds out that his mom's been um, help covering up for um, Bobby and Scott, who really committed this and was okay with Brendan to stay in there as long as Scott and Bobby didn't have to go in. Um, Chelsea, Wisconsin is corrupt. They need to get out and leave. Yeah. Joanne, Kathleen seems to know from phone data that Bobby Dassey wasn't where he said he was. Correct. She saw, um, she's got where his cell phone pinged off of at that time, and it was in the opposite direction from where he testified he was going. Laura says, so once it's federal, then the president uh, can pardon him then. Right, but what what you could go for right now is we have the November 6th election here, and Scott Walker is not looking too good in, in the polls. So if the current Wisconsin governor is defeated, there's a chance that the new governor would pardon him. Now, I do not know if pardon is acceptable either. I know they want to prove innocence. So um, I don't know. Adam says, what do you think? Who do you think deleted the voice messages? Well, it was Ryan Hilgas. Um, and why can't Stephen watch Making a Murderer himself? Because he doesn't have, he, they, they do have uh, the ability to watch TV, but they don't have Netflix, a paid channel. So he can't watch that. Nor does he have internet. Because I know there's a Facebook page that is saying it's Stephen. Stephen does not have access to the internet. So he can't watch Netflix, he can't email people, he can't be on Facebook, none of that. Jean, I was surprised in Making a Murderer too. They didn't mention how cracks were shaking his head yes or no to direct Bobby's testimony. Hmm. I don't know if I ever noticed that. Vicky said, maybe Kim Kardashian, and Kardashian should request a pardon since she has had prior success. Um... Scott Scott Walker is the only one that could pardon him, and he says he won't pardon anybody. Um, Carlos says, will there be a season three? <laughs> um, and that's somebody screenshot again of what Scott posted today. Um, that's really funny. Um, the, the documentarians have said they're not opposed to doing a season three, and obviously these cases continue, so... Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure there'll be a season three. Um, Crystal says, oh my God, watch confession tapes on Netflix. Yes, that's good too. Danielle says, you got to wonder how many law enforcement folks now realize they were wrong about Stephen and Brendan. We'll never know because they won't admit. Yeah, I know. And shame on them. Um, we've got five minutes left. Karen says, manipulation and coercion is done by evildoers. Heather, whatever happened with Kratz and the accusation about him taking advantage of a rape victim, is he even allowed to practice law anymore? Um, he quit being on the state side and then went into, um, um, he was a, a, a defense attorney, right, for a while? And I don't even know if he's practicing anymore because he's, or what he's doing. He just seems to want to keep making money off of Steven's name. And that's all he seems to be doing. Um, Caroline, why is making murder been talked about here? I'm not sure what you're saying, Caroline. Um, Chelsea says, were you in the documentary? I'm in making a murderer too for like three seconds and when i watched it i didn't even see me one of the moderators from stephen avery project when they watch it they're like oh my god i saw you and i was like you did um so it's truly nothing um um where i have said i believe in our other group mam gossip i said uh, um Tell me what episode and um, where I'm at in it. And I think only, I think one person found me. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm hardly a, a, a star of this show, um, like some people 
say I claim to be. Jody, I'm sorry, maybe I missed it, but are you related to Stephen? No, I'm not related to Stephen or a friend of the family. I am a supporter, and I talk to Stephen on occasion. Stephen considers Stephen Avery Project his official, well, he calls it his website, his, his official website, you know, because, of course, he doesn't understand the whole Facebook thing. Um, Caesar says, I don't understand why the Hallbacks don't want to get to the bottom of this. Yeah. Uh, Joanne, who found the license plate? I can't recall who found it. But all that stuff, um, if, if you want to research the case, go to stephenaverycase.org, and it'll be in there. Um, Kathy says, Teresa's plate was taken off her car. There, you, yeah, there, um, but it might have been one was still on the car and one was removed. Because didn't Pam Sturm say, no, she didn't say what the plate was, did she? She only tried to read the VIN. Um, Sharon, will they get pardoned? Not as of now. Um, Jamie says, I date an attorney and have other attorney friends, and I cannot even get them to watch the show. They refuse to believe our judicial system can be this corrupt in Wisconsin. Sad when our attorneys cannot conceive of concept. Corruption. Anyone remember the Revolutionary War? Wow, yeah. Um, all right, I'm just trying to scroll through and look for questions, not comments, since I've got two minutes left. Uh, Doreen says, how do you know it's Scott and Bobby? I think Stephen, Stephen is innocent too, so terrible. Everything fits that it's Scott and Bobby. Um, so, you know... Uh, go read Kathleen's filings um, and just everything points to Scott and Bobby. Matt, what would have happened to the Sheriff's Department if they had to pay the original civil case of 30 plus million? I have no idea. Um, Jeffrey, why does Bobby Dassey shower before he goes bow hunting? I'm not a hunter. But from what people have told me is you want to make sure you have no scent on you whatsoever because um, deer have an awesome sense of smell. So you don't want them to be able to smell you and run off. So, um, so, you, so that is something that's reasonable, I guess. Um, and maybe because he was hunting people. Um, Kelly, did you see the post where they play the call to dispatch with license plate of RAV4 and background audio hear them say it's her car? And yeah, that's something when I just read Kathleen's tweets, she says it says it's hers. And so we are now at the top of the hour. So sorry to everybody that I didn't get to your questions or comments. Um, and we've been talking for an hour now, so I need to go. I need to do some work and have some dinner and things like that. Um, I will be popping on to do these sporadically. You never know when I will pop on here when I have time trying to fit it in around my work schedule. I work in politics, and there's a whole lot going on right now until the November 6th election, so my time, everything's like crazy right now. Um, for the guilters who watch this and then want to talk about me and call me a cow, I'm so sad that you don't like me. My world will come to an end because the people who think Stephen is guilty want to call me a cow and that I'm stupid. Cows are actually very smart. But anyway, so thank you everybody for joining me tonight and um, stay tuned to Stephen Avery Project where we give you the uh, re up to date information on the case. And then our other group, MAM Gossip, is where we talk about all the drama that surrounds the case as well, like um, the nasty post that Scott made today about Kathleen Zellner. So have a good evening and we will talk soon. <laughs>